Hey everyone and welcome to today's episode of the vlog. So today's episode is different to the one that I was going to bring you. We were going to be doing some work on a TT, but I thought I'd bring you this breaking news flash. Okay, so this week um, I took my car, or last weekend I took my car for a run up to Maidenhead near London. Um, first time I took the car on the motorway uh, proper, it's been on the dual carriage way, etc. But this is the first motorway experience I've had with a car. The car ran flawlessly, no issues whatsoever. I fully charged the car on the way there. And on the way back, I knew I would need to sort of do a, a, a quick charge. So I figured now is a good opportunity to see if the car will supercharge. So I found myself a local uh, supercharge station around the Reading area and I went to plug the car in and I got this error. Tried it a few times and again, the same error kept coming back and forth. So, um, couldn't supercharge the car at a Tesla supercharger. So, I had to find somewhere quick because we wouldn't make it back. Even though the car said that I could make it back if I traveled at 60 miles an hour, there was no way that was gonna happen. So, I found, I got up my Zap map, found a, uh, a charging station around the corner from the Tesla supercharger. So, me and my friend went there, we parked the car, and after some messing around because it was, then this is the thing with the UK charging network. Uh, there's so many different charging networks and so many different apps that you need. I had to download an app and get myself uh, a, um, a registered before I can charge it, which was a, a real pain. Um, but eventually the car started to charge and it was literally a Costa coffee, coffee shop about five minutes away. So we went, had a quick uh, coffee for about half an hour, came back, car was good to go and we traveled on our merry journey home. So I figured, you know what, I'm gonna give Tesla a call to see what's going on. So this is what happened. If you are in an emergency situation, including flat tires and lockouts, press one. If you have already ordered your Tesla and have questions about delivery, press two. If you are looking to buy a Tesla and have questions on how to make an order, press three. If you require service or support, including charging, car functions, account and online orders or accessories, Press four. A few moments later. One eternity later. Eventually. Hi, I wonder if you can help me. Um, I was using my car last week on a run and I tried to supercharge it for the first time and uh, the car wouldn't supercharge. Now the car has been damaged um, and repaired so I just wanted to find out, has my car been um, blocked from supercharging? I believe they keep some model S this one. It is. Yeah, but how long have you had this vehicle? Um, I've had it a few months now, about four or five months. Great, great. Let's have a look here. And was it a salvage vehicle, this one? It was, yes. It was, yeah. It does appear that that's what's updated as here as well, so yeah, it's restricted, it won't be able to supercharge on here. Okay, what options do I have to get it re-enabled? I think there's no guarantee it would be, but for example, if you wanted to go down that route of, of trying, you would need to book into a Tesla approved body shop uh, and have a look on here but there would be no guarantee even if they were to check it that it, it would be able to be back on here. Right, okay. That's a Loser. shame because obviously um, Tesla have opened up their network to other vehicles so if other oh, salvage no. vehicles use their Tesla, your Tesla chargers that's fine but I, you, I'm assuming I can't use supercharging on other networks as well? Uh, or fast charging, DC charging. We would, for us, it would just be the Tesla ones that we uh, they wouldn't be able to support. As for any third party chargers, you should be fine with those, not as far as I'd be aware. Okay, that's fine. So I can supercharge on other networks and just not Teslas? Just not the Tesla ones, yeah. Right, fine. Okay, well, thanks for confirming that. Much appreciated. Oh, sure, thanks so much. Thank you. Cheers, bye. Cheers. Cheers. 
so frustrating. Now, ordinarily, this story would end just there. But you see, something has changed. A few months ago, Tesla allowed other manufacturers to be able to use their uh, superchargers. All you have to do is you download a Tesla app, you register a card against it, and if you've got a BMW or a VW or a Mercedes, you can now use the Tesla charging network. In fact, if you've got any car, as long as it supports the um, CCS uh, charge it, charger type chargers, you can use those networks. So you can use the um, Tesla uh, network. This presents Tesla with a bit of a problem. You see, in the past, when Tesla cars have been repaired, salvaged cars like mine, and then they go onto the network or they go onto their superchargers, Tesla have always said, well, we don't know if your car is safe to use it and we want to protect our brand, so therefore you can't use supercharging. We're going to turn off your, turn it off your vehicle. And that's what they've done. But now, allowing other manufacturers to use their vehicles, Tesla can't check to see whether that car has had an accident or not. So legitimately, a Tesla owner whose car has been had supercharging switched off could take Tesla to court and challenge them on their blocking the supercharging network. So that call that you just heard, there's some additional information that the operative didn't tell me. And that is that from the 10th of November, Tesla would now allow salvage vehicles to use their supercharging network but first of all, you need to get your car checked by Tesla. So he said that, that that was no guarantee. And he's right, that still applies. But there is a method that you can go. You can book your car into a service center and they would have your car for three hours and 25 minutes. That's what they will take to do that. And what they're doing at three hours and 25 minutes, I haven't, I haven't a clue. Maybe they take the battery off to check it. I don't know but it's exactly three hours and 25 minutes guess how much it costs you look at my screen now six hundred and forty three pounds and fifty pence six hundred and forty three pounds just to check that is incredible not to mention daylight ripoff I mean, if it's a couple of hundred pounds, you could justify it. But 643 pounds. That means Tesla's, well, you can see the rate. 165 pound an hour is what they charge is their going rate to look at your vehicle. This their charge per hour. It's extortionate. So do I do it or do I don't? For me, absolutely not. Why? Well, that journey that I took, I had the benefit of charging my car at work. So I, I have fully charged my car. It took to fully charge my car from flat takes about three hours. Actually, it takes less than that. It takes about two hours to do it, which is brilliant. So while I'm working, my car's charging. By the end of the day, or even halfway throughout the day, the car is charged and I can use it. So that Friday, I fully charged my car and then we went on the journey up to London. Now, what did it charge me? To, or what did it cost me to use the public network? Cost me something like seven pounds 62. That was for 40 minutes charge. Now, seven pounds 42 to do over 200 miles, I think is pretty reasonable. In fact, it's extremely reasonable. And for the few times that I actually use the motorway network to go and to do journeys, I'm not gonna spend 643 pounds. I just could not justify spending that money because the return on investment just to get free supercharging just doesn't add up. And to top it all, Tesla do not guarantee that if they check the car that they're actually gonna turn it back on. If it needs more parts, it's gonna cost you even more. So the DC charger, I suspect, is what they're looking at because that's how supercharging works. So they're gonna check that to see if that works. So, um, it, and if there's a problem in there, and I don't know how, what they do to check it, they obviously got their diagnostic tool and it will tell them whether the DC charger has got any an anomalies. And what's to say that those anomalies are not to do with anything other than wear and tear? Who knows? Percent, potentially, they'll ask you to change that. And from what I understand, that unit is quite expensive. It's around the 1,000 to 1,500 pounds, not to mention the labor, so p potentially, I could have a bill of over two and a half thousand pound 
for me to get supercharging for free for maybe once or twice a year that I will use it. So thank you very much, Mr. Tesla, Mr. M Mr. Musk. I love your products, but I am not paying you that kind of money. And maybe they do that to discourage people from repairing their own vehicles or discouraging them from getting supercharging or certainly discouraging people who've got pre-2016 cars that have free supercharging from getting their cars fixed. Now, if I was, like I said, if I was doing journeys on a motorway every single day, five days a week, I would be able to justify that, but I'm not. So I'm happy to do my charging and um, enjoy it that way. So yeah, that was my experience with the old Tesla super free supercharging. It, it is non-existent. And here's the thing. If you remember when I was doing the car in the first instance and I was hiding my number plate, made no difference. Because the minute you register your car with Tesla and you've got to register the car to take ownership of the vehicle so you can basically get all the features in the car, the minute you do that, that is when Tesla do their check. So they do a HPI check and that's when it flags up as, yep, this car is a salvage. So the new owner, from, from the time they accept that car, that's when they know. And that's the reason why I stopped hiding the number plate after a while, because I knew that was the case. So yeah, Tesla, not very nice. Now, this will probably change because someone somewhere is gonna challenge this. And the European, the Union, the European courts as they are, um, as they stand, they tend to be more biased towards uh, the consumer. So at some point, someone's going to challenge this and Tesla will have to overcome this because if they block their user, then if they block Tesla owners from supercharging their cars, Tesla owners who have repaired salvage vehicles, then that's prejudice as far as I'm concerned. Prejudice against Tesla car owners and that just won't cut it, Elon. So watch this space because things will change. Anyway, I've been sent this dash cam for my car and I'm gonna fit this into my Tesla. Why? Because my Tesla, the 2014 model, is the only Tesla on the market in the UK that doesn't have any dash cam cameras at all. So normally you've got the um, system that Tesla provide, which is really good, but the early cars don't have it. So I've been kindly sent this from Viafo. It's the A19, A119 mini uh, dash cam. And uh, it's a great cam because not only does it, basically the screen sits like this, horizontal rather than a flat screen so it sits nice and flush on your screen they also send you or sent me the wireless remote controller plus a, a polarizing filter for the lens so that it doesn't get dazzled by the sun so let's take a look at this and see what it looks like okay so out of the box you get the camera itself which is great looking so basically the camera mounts like so on the windscreen then you just basically point the lens in the best position and then you have a screen that looks like that so you can look at the screen from your driving position on the side here we've got a usb uh, c connector and we also got our slot for our sd card which is excellent normal power cable that can run through the vehicle you get quite a lengthy um, run here and then of course you've got a uh, 12 volt socket that you can use in in your um cigarette adapter or it's not actually called a cigarette lighter anymore is it? it's a 12 volt power socket that's what they normally call them but in the tesla we're going to fit this i've got two usbs and my ones are hidden as well so we'll use that that'd be quite handy then you get this nice little uh tool that you can use to tuck the cable underneath the um, trim and some additional stickers as well. It also comes with this um, little electrostatic sticker that you put on the windscreen so that you can clean it before you mount the camera. So let's go and fit this in the car. It ain't gonna take us long and um, we'll see how it looks. Okay, so we're in the car and I have plugged it into my USB port in the corner down there and it supplies power to the, vi to the actual charger straight away. So now at the moment, this is recording, um, which is good. So all we need to do now is find a suitable mounting place and I'm thinking probably just around here would be good. And then we can just adjust it and I can also see it. So there we are. 
about there. So what we'll do is we'll run this cable in along here, along down the trim down here. It'll come in under here. We'll feed it through the back in here somehow and then down the side here because this panel here will come off and then it will come out from just down below here so this uh, center console that you saw me fit on the vehicle this bit here comes away and then underneath there we can here we go I'll just get out of the way underneath there we can feed the cable and then it can go straight into there so that's what we'll do okay and there we go all installed and plugged in so we've got a little cable run that is provided in this uh, center console which is really great so we can then put the existing rubber back into play and then that looks as OEM as you can get there you go so that's all plugged in and all looking flush perfect and this little gap there for the cable to run and that can stay permanently plugged in and I've still got a single USB port and a 12 volt power if I want to use it and now we've got the cable hanging in now fortunately this is the probably the neatest and quickest installation that I've ever done and it's thankfully to dare I say the Tesla's poor um, panel uh, um, fitting if this is an Aldi it will be really tight and difficult to take off but the Tesla's it just bolts just comes apart basically so we're able to run the cables neatly underneath the trim here and then along the front here so it's just hanging off and then there's a little tray underneath here and then even the gap here the gaps on the plastics are so poor that I was able to fit it in between you would never know that unless you looked uh, and then it runs underneath the trim here and then nice and neatly down on behind this panel underneath here you can't see it even in the tray there which is great that's a professional installation as far as i'm concerned so final bit is to stick the camera in and then we're going to take and test and see what the image looks like and that is it camera's installed it's not in my vision it's out of the way and i've got my little screen there that you can see or you would have been able to see but it's now gone off and it started to record I quite like that yeah that's nice and it's out of the way and yeah here you are that's my normal view so I don't see the camera and that's the camera but I can see the screen on the side here so that's great you know a little screen film let's get rid of that here we are done right let's see what the images look like so the first thing that you notice is that it is very clear you can definitely recognize number plates and it is today it was quite a, a sort of a bright afternoon and the sun was low in the sky so i thought i'll take the, the opportunity to drive but as you can see you can clearly identify um all objects uh, some dash cams I've tested in the past and they've not been very clear but as you can see you can clearly see the number plate in the car in front and here I deliberately took this piece here because this is in the sun this is direct sunlight into the um, lens and as you can see you can still quite you can still see very um, clearly although you can't see the registration of the vehicle in front but um, as we come closer, you see that that does get better. But the sun is not uh, blinding the, um, the, the lens and we can still see the road ahead. So if you were to have any incident or if anything was to happen in front of you, you'll be able to clearly see what's going on and um, what action has been recorded in the camera. So there you go, pretty good um, dash cam. Um, Via Viafol also sent me the hard wire kit, which I didn't need in the end because of the way that I did the installation, but it's uh, quite, probably one of the better uh, dash cams that I've tested. So link below if you're interested in, in getting that uh, kit for your car and I will give you a follow up, no doubt, as we continue to use it. Right, okay, so thank you for this. Uh, Hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, content, but look forward to your comments below. Tell me what you think about Tesla's uh, scammy uh, method of uh, ensuring that uh, they don't pay out. And, and I think that's really what it's, it's all about. But like I said, it's uh, not an issue for me. 
Anyway, thank you for viewing this. Uh, don't forget to subscribe down here if you're a casual viewer. Now, we know if our subscribers have dropped off a little bit, so if you are enjoying our content, we would really appreciate a, a subscribe. So uh, click on that subscribe button, click on the bell notification so you know when we release a new video. And we will definitely be back on the TT next week. So look out for that. In the meantime, have a great week and we'll see you in the next one.